Does artificial intelligence excite or scare you? Now, of course, there are great science fiction stories where the robots with their artificial intelligence take over the world. <laughs> oh, ah, still fresh for me every time. Greetings, Bill Nye here, answering your questions from Twitter. This is yet another science support. At yes on 522 hen, isn't evolution just a theory that remains unproven? No! Evolution is a theory that has been proven over and over. And I remind you, the word theory in science is, does not refer to something that you just make up like an idea. The word theory in science means something that you, with which you can make predictions. Countless predictions, like COVID-19 mutating into all these variants, countless predictions have been made with the theory of evolution. Evolution is the fact of life, and it's why you and I are here. But it is my wish that you will think about that. Evolution is what makes the whole thing go. At Steel Hester asks, this morning's group chat subject, Wait, comma, what do brains actually feel like? Well, if you go into uh, medicine, they'll let you squeeze a brain. I've squeezed a few brains. Look, I'm fine. They're firm but squishy. They're squishy but firm. Here's a question from an at interrobang underscore two. Will humanity ever leave the solar system? Uh, probably not. But some future species maybe, you know, humanity may evolve and change where we couldn't breed with ourselves, that species may leave the solar system. Not sure where they would go or what they'd do, but we might send an instrument, a spacecraft, to another star system. I could imagine that easily. We'd use a, a solar sail, and we'd give it a push with a laser. Be cool. Bzzz, bzzz. Except it'd be in space, there wouldn't be any sound. It would just be. At his smilf. Well, that's, that's quite an assertion. I don't know if it's I in there, but here we go. Question, how do scientists just figure things out? And who is to say what they found is right? What if scientists are just saying out of their ass and we just listen and go with it because they're scientists? You know, um, at he, 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 Smilf, you're asking a wonderful and important question. This deal of who is the authority when it comes to something like the world is round. You, at first, certainly are taking somebody's word for it. The world is round. Because you go outside, you look around, the world looks flat. But you can show with a little diligence that the world is round. And you and I are living at a time when we can look at pictures from spacecraft. When it comes to climate change, that's a lot harder. You're taking the word of climate scientists largely, albeit until recently when the fires are getting worse and worse and everything's getting warmer and warmer. But there you're really taking somebody's word for it. But what we want, Smilf, is for you to be able to evaluate the claims of the scientists. And so this is why we want science education for everyone. At Tony Basie 4, will artificial intelligence have the capability of knowing it is AI and was created by pound sign humans? Do we know whether we are an advanced bio AI? Think about it. We're probably not an advanced AI. You, you know, in science, you're not allowed to have what's called an unfalsifiable hypothesis. That's not useful in science. So if you have a hypothesis that we are part of a video game or an artificial intelligence system and we can't know it, that's not a useful hypothesis. You can't know it because the, the artificial intelligence programmed it so you can't know it. Well, what if I found a way to find the artificial, well, they programmed it so you would think you found it, but you didn't really find, it's just, it's a circle. You'll never get there from here. Good question though, excellent question. Buffy Samer. Samer. I'm not an astrology girly. Well, we have that in common. But every time weird fuckery is going on in my life, it's Mercury retrograde. Can science explain that? Yes. No, here's what's happening. The orbit of Mercury is only 88 Earth days. So the Earth is going around, Mercury's going around, and so as observed from Earth, Mercury ap appears to move backwards in the astronomical night sky. Uh, but it happens all the time. With a period of only 88 days, it's just 
the chances of you looking at Mercury when it happens to be appearing to be going backwards relative to fixed stars is so often you're just conflating or mixing cause and effect. Stop attributing anything in your life to astrology. It is utter bunk. As my mother always said, common sense is not that common. At Alex G2, how does climate change cause pandemics? Do we globally come down with colds when it freezes and night sweats when it thaws? If you're a human, what is the most dangerous animal out to get you? It is not, as you might expect, as Dorothy expected, lions and tigers and bears. Oh no, mosquitoes are the most dangerous animal for humans. So as we enable tropical organisms to live farther and farther from the equator, the chances of, of us getting infected are higher and higher. Then with our technological success that has enabled us to have airplanes that fly all over the place, we have now transmitted diseases from one person to another much more readily than was possible 200 years ago. And so uh, this is a drag, but it's also an opportunity because we understand what's happening. At uh, Purple Kanai, you know, sometimes I wonder, are humans still evolving or have we somehow halted in our altered nature's process of natural selection? No, we're still evolving, man. The mate you select is uh, based on evolution. If germs and parasites can kill you, then you don't live as long and you're much less likely to pass your genes on. But then it gets into this other bigger thing. Is it not just the individual, but is it the society or culture that produces them? Uncle Bill predicts, as women and girls become more enabled in our society, as they're able to live longer, get jobs, have their own credit cards, then they're waiting longer to have kids. And so I think we are very subtly selecting, at least in the developed world, for women who are able more successfully to have babies later. We'll stay tuned over the next few centuries. We'll see if that proves to be true. It's a hypothesis. You can evaluate it. At Crypto Rises to Moon asks, how do scientists determine temps, I guess that's temperatures, from thousands of years ago? Serious question. Well, of course it's a serious question. So geologists look at the minerals that form. So if you got lava, you have molten rock, and it cools off, it'll trap certain minerals, certain patterns of atoms and molecules. By melting lava in the laboratory, they can determine what minerals form and then work backwards from there. And then the other thing, if you find plants and animals in, uh, in the geologic formation, and you know that those plants and animals could only thrive when it was warm, then you can infer that that layer of rock formed when it was warm. And you go to Antarctica and there's fossil dinosaurs down there because they were able to wander around not when it was covered with ice but when it was covered with lush things to eat. You know, dinosaur salad. And I hope it was fun for them. At Wild Spartans, why are hurricanes and typhoons called different things when they're basically the same thing? Ah! Uh, they're coined by uh, different people in different parts of the world speaking different languages. What are, you know, what are we supposed to do? You grow up speaking French, you're going to say one thing. You grow up speaking Tagalog, you're going to say another thing. In general, hurricanes occur in the northern hemisphere, so they're spinning counterclockwise. Many, many typhoons occur in the southern hemisphere, and they'll be spinning clockwise. Here's a question from Banana Lies Split. How does the James Webb Space Telescope differ from Hubble? Well, JWST, as we like to call it, is bigger and more powerful, and it works in the infrared. The light it reflects and gathers is in the infrared, and that's why the mirrors are covered with gold, real gold, because it's just somehow the ideal material for reflecting infrared light. Chronically Tired Crees asks, if space is expanding, WTF is surrounding space for it to expand into? You've hit upon a great and wonderful philosophical question. Space-time is like everything. It doesn't expand into anything. Everything is just spreading apart. And what keeps it from spreading apart, near as we can tell, are sources of gravity, like stars and planets. Like, where is it all going into? What does this even mean? To put it simply, nobody knows. But maybe you'll be the astronomer that figures it out. So it's not expanding any, into anything. It is everything, and it's all expanding. Whoa. T. Partain. How do scientists determine when existence will end? 
Well, I guess it depends, Partain, what you mean by existence. The solar system, you know, the sun, four billion years is gonna swell up and whoo, incinerate the earth, except as I say, it'll be in space. There's no sound, it'll just be. Yours and my existence will end a lot sooner than that, which kind of sucks, but that's the way it is. When will there be the end of time? Uh, nobody knows, but the universe is expanding and no one really knows why that is. And so since it had a beginning, will it have an end? Eh. So we'll see. No, we won't see. Neither you nor I will see. It sucks. Thanks for your question. Ben James. Genuine question, as opposed to the questions that he might normally ask. How do scientists tell the difference between COVID variants? What makes them different from each other, other than the effects of humans? I'd love to know the answer. It doesn't appear there is any type of universal rules or standards. Au contraire, Ben, James, we have developed techniques for determining the sequence of amino acids on DNA, and they can tell when the sequence changes. So that's where the word variant comes from. Now, evolution is this process by which living things make replicas of themselves. And so when they make copies, there are little changes introduced. And because there's so many millions of us infected with so many billions of these viruses, these changes are emerging naturally, especially fast. Stay tuned, there will be new variants this fall. <laughs> Coach BJ Thompson, BJ116. Uh, does artificial intelligence excite or scare you? It excites me. Artificial intelligence is just the next thing in computing. You make software that uses what it did before to make a better version of itself. And this gets into an old thing called feedback and control at some level. You know, you have a thermostat. You introduce changes based on what happened before. People are opening the doors and letting the heat out or the air conditioned air out at certain times of day. The thermostat will compensate for that. And bear in mind, humans design all this stuff. It doesn't come out of the sky. These are people designing systems. And so if we make a system that gets out of hand and crashes, well, that's bad. So we'll have to change it so it doesn't do that. It's gonna be exciting. At Jiggy Summer asks, how do scientists figure out where life can exist in the U? And I don't think they mean the university because that's also a mystery. <laughs> we just launched the JWST, James, Wad James Webb Space Telescope. One of the things we're gonna try to do with this gizmo is look for methane in atmospheres of distant, distant, distant planets. So there are non-organism ways to make methane. But most here on Earth comes from living things, from bacteria that give it off. When cows are burping, those are bacteria in their tummies that are producing this stuff. And so if we see methane in the atmosphere of a distant planet, one might infer that there's something alive over there. And then the big other big thing is, as near as anybody can tell, to have living things, you need a way to move chemicals around. You gotta have a liquid that would dissolve chemicals, move them around, allow the chemicals to come back out of solution and be used by this living thing. The overwhelming likely candidate is water. And there is water all over our solar system on icy asteroids and other planets. And so we figure there must be water out there. And if there's water out there and it is also a solvent for other living things, then perhaps very reasonably there are other living things. Note well that it is very reasonable that you and maybe even I will be alive when life is discovered on another world. And when that happens, it will change this world. All of us will feel differently about being a living thing in the cosmos. At Dead Tease asks, why is genetic engineering so complicated? Mush brain not understand. Genetic engineering is either simple or really complicated. So guys like, George Washington, Thomas Jefferson, take the pollen from one wheat plant and shake it onto the ova, the eggs of another wheat plant, to hybridize them. So that was genetic modification by traditional farming. Farmers have been messing with plants and crops and domesticated animals for centuries, 10,000 years at least. But doing it in much more subtle quicker, more effective ways, requires understanding the genome 
of corn or whatever you're trying to mess with. And then understanding a mechanism that keeps the corn borer, from this is an insect, from eating it. Then had to put that gene into corn. Not so easy, but it was done. And by the way, that whole genetic modification thing started with cotton. And then the other famous, famous thing is this business with glyphosate. The brand, big brand name you hear about is Roundup. They figured out there's this shikimic acid pathway, oh yes, uh, by inhibiting the plant's ability to metabolize the shikimic acid. They could put this material on the crops, on the ground. Weeds couldn't grow. Things that grow fast couldn't grow. Uh, but then what's happened in the great evolutionary arms race of life, species of weed are emerging where they, the shikimic acid pathway is not inhibited and they grow anyway. It's us versus them. And I remind us, farming is not natural. If you stop farming, the land goes back to a prairie or a forest or a meadow, whatever it was. It's humans doing this stuff that enables us to eat. When I was young, there were fewer than three billion people in the world. Now there are almost eight billion, and that's because we found ways to feed them all. And a lot of that has been genetic manipulation of crops. Good question. Dev Does Drawings wants to know, why does CO2 get all the hate when it's methane that causes more damage to global warming? Why is no one talking about cutting those emissions? People are talking about methane all the time. People are very, very concerned about methane. Methane leaks at oil wells and oil production. Methane leaks is a huge problem. Cow burps, cow burps, are a huge problem. But the reason you hear so much about CO2 is because there's so much more of it. The effect of CO2 is bigger than the effect of methane. Both enormous problems for us humans. At Therapy, how do droughts work? Like, does the rain cycle just decide to stop working? Let us keep in mind, the rain cycle does not, as we say, have agency. I don't think it makes any decisions. Just as we make the ocean out here warmer, the air coming ashore is drier. As this gets drier, everything gets drier. More droughts are making things drier, which causes more droughts. At Dear Sarah, how do volcanoes erupt after doing nothing for decades? This is a real question, like WTF causes an eruption to happen. The movement of tectonic plates happen over tens of thousands or hundreds of thousands of years. So 10 years in the volcanic tectonic scheme of things is a tiny, tiny fraction. So these little shifts in the tectonic plates cause volcanoes to happen. And on human timescales, they seem far apart, but on geologic timescales, they're just happening all the time. At Devon 0452082 asks, how many millions of gallons of water can a hurricane drop? Uh, I think it's closer to billions. So uh, we've done calculations on Katrina, and then there are category six hurricanes. So far, they've only happened at sea, but they drop millions and millions of tons of water. So if this desk were full of water, two of these desks were full of water, it would weigh about a ton. Millions of tons of water, billions of gallons. So those are all the questions for today. Thanks for watching Science Support. This has been part four, and I hope you felt that your science was supported. Thanks for watching. Let's change the world.